Good evening. It's Maundy Thursday. I'm going to read a reflection based on John chapter 13, the Last Supper, and I'm going to begin with verse 12 and read through verse 35. When he had finished washing their feet, he put his on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he said this, Jesus was troubled and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, is it? Jesus answered, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. When he had gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. Love one another, a mandate. Maundy Thursday is the day the global community of Christians commemorate Jesus's mandate to love that he gave his disciples even as Judas prepared to betray him. This is when we remember how Jesus exemplified love by being a servant to his friends and washing their feet before his last meal with them prior to the crucifixion. The icon you are viewing is the only one in my gallery of icons that I avoid. When I pass by, I avert my eyes. It came in the mail during an experience of great betrayal. There's personal pain attached to this icon, as well as the horror of the unfolding story of Jesus's trial and torture set in motion with a kiss. But I've had a revelation that has set me free to value this icon and explore further the meaning of it. It shows me now the power of love. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. Look at Judas. See how he strains to contain Jesus, 
to control him, coerce him. His arms embracing his teacher can't quite fit all the way around Jesus' broad shoulders. Those shoulders that would bear the weight of the cross, our sin, the weight of the world God so loved. Jesus is too big to constrain. Love can't be forced. The figure of Judas in his robes is devoid of light. His betrayal took place in the night. His expression is that of a corpse, his eye unseeing. Look at Jesus, God incarnate, who had just washed his disciples' feet, even Judas' feet, as would a servant. In taking off his robes, symbolically divesting himself of power. In breaking bread, sharing his own life and power with them. Manna, bread of heaven, Jesus, God incarnate, transmutation, for God so loved the world. Look at Jesus. His sorrowful face radiates love and light. Love and light that is also the crux of the cross that is just discernible in the nimbus around his head. Light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is wearing a blue robe that represents the kingdom of God, which cannot be contained as it is always expanding, against which no power of hell can prevail. The red of his tunic symbolizes love, life, and salvation. His blood poured out for us. Notice, it even touches Judas. Jesus' love is not constrained by our sin. Now, as I view this icon, all I can see is God's great love, uncontainable, secure against all powers and principalities that would try to overcome it. Jesus, secure in his identity. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. We, in Christ, are uncontainable. His love through us, an unstoppable power for good. Let me leave you with two questions for reflection. The first question is, when have you felt most whole, safe, fully yourself, fully alive, fully free to love and be loved? And the second question, when have you felt most manipulated, coerced, drained, unloved or unloving, trapped. God has a revelation for you as you reflect on those questions about who he intends for you to be. Listen to him. Then go out and serve with love, empowered by the Holy Spirit. God bless you.